So Paul was saying douche yesterday, and I realized I don't think he knows what a douche is. So tell me what a douche is. What is a douche, Paul? We are going to talk about the Navi motor. Just do a quick kind of rundown on the components, kind of how to access things and what you'll likely be working on. The transmission is going to affect how it takes off, how it accelerates. So first off, what we have going on here is this is your variator up front. I'm gonna pull this off and show you guys where it should be. Because if it gets thin to a certain amount, what's gonna happen is you're gonna lose top speed. So over time, if you feel like your Navi is getting slower and slower and slower. Hello. Hi, this is Paul Wall with Medicare Health Services. How are you today? Did you say your your name is Paul Wall, People's Champ? This is Paul Wall, sir. The Paul Medicare Wall? Health Services, Paul Wall. Yeah, Paul Wall, the People's Champ. Wait, let's say your bike is sitting at 3,000 RPM and it's shifting, okay? You're not making a lot of power at 3,000. So this is where your tuning comes in. You know, I would advise if you're going to be modifying this bike, just get the clutch right off the bat. It has a lot more mass and it doesn't breathe like this one, so it's gonna... If you don't put the belt down in the back, like this, now your drive face is loose. This is steel. You end up ruining your, your crank. So Paul was saying douche yesterday, and I realized I don't think he knows what douche is. So tell me what a douche is. What is a douche, Paul? Uh, I just made some guesses. Well, yeah, yeah, give us some well, guesses. Well, yeah. tell us the guesses on, yeah. on here. No, that was a sponge. Ooh. All right. Uh, and then I thought it was that thing on the bottom of the urinal. Oh, but that's a cake. actually, that's, that's a urinal cake. That's a pretty good guess, though. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And then uh, I said fat. <laughs> oh, oh Jesus! Do you want to explain what a douche deep is? cuts? Deep cuts. Do you want to explain what a douche is, but in a way that can be put on YouTube in yes. a medical uh, manner? It is a tool used by women, primarily. I would imagine. I don't know. It may be whatever. Anyway, whatever. Yeah. Uh, by so women or on women? Women use it to like freshen up their lady parts. Oh. Yeah, is that is that like okay? Is that no, PC? That's but not it, that's not enough detail. You need a little bit more detail. So it's a bottle with like a, a spout, we'll say, right? Uh, and it inward, <laughs> kind of like the the it's a camel oh. back. Yeah, it's like a camel back. Think of a camel. Yeah, think of a camel bag the, that you would then squeeze, and where would all the water go? To wash out the insides, Paul. Yep. And then it goes back Some of them are the so it goes. Yeah. You know how Ed goes goosh. Well, it goes douche. <laughs> yeah, it's to wash out the insides. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and you can use it. You can like they rectally have, like, scented ones and yeah. How, what do you what do you think of your world? Now? <laughs> Paul's like, nah, I'm, I'm, the I'm, last I'm, six I don't months, do I taught him what menopause is because you didn't know oh, that menopause is kind of a messed up one i feel sorry yeah, for women it's dude evil. yeah it's not well, cool the men and then what else Hello. oh yeah what else yeah. did you teach him about the douche yeah there's something else and how babies are made didn't you teach him that yeah we talked about no that. they you just kiss. <laughs> yeah i believe that i believe that the yeah. internet talks a lot about that <laughs> you kiss and then it's, it shows up at the hospital oh, right? uh, well, yeah, well, you gotta hold them. You want to have twins. You gotta hold them a certain way, though. Yeah. It's like a secret uh, handshake. Yeah, it's like the this. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. And then you gotta open no, it. So like, oh. Do you, do you know how to do that? Take your hands and do this. I'm not gonna do that. No, yeah, no, do, no, it. It. do it. Do it. It's not bad. It's obviously a joke. No, no so just like, do it. It's, it's nothing. Not, it's, it's nothing that's hurtful. It's nothing that's hurtful. No, not at all. It's like what we did when we were like five years old. It's silly. Just do it. Hands like this. Okay. And just like me. Okay. Now, bring them together. No, I'm not going to do that. Paul, Just do it. Paul, it's your so yeah. awkward. Yeah. You're a child. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, you, you've proven Paul, otherwise. Just do it. No, you, you, won't, you won't regret it. You won't regret it. <laughs> do it with John. Do it with John. Kids. It's like a funny little kid thing. Like, do it with John to show him that it's people. safe. Right? <laughs> 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 hey, Paul. Enter this thing. Turn your hands sideways. Oh, yeah. No, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> do, do it with John to show him that it's safe. No, 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 you okay. just do it. You ready? Okay. You ready? Okay. All right. Oh, yep. See? Look in there. That's look it. in there. What do you see? Look in there. Just, just do, do it. it. Come yeah. on. What do you see, Paul? See? Let's see. I see your Spread it more. What's it look like? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I still don't understand. Oh. All right. We are going to talk about the Navi motor. Just do a quick kind of rundown on the components, 
what does what, um, kind of how to access things and what you'll likely be working on if you purchase one. Obviously, you know, it's, it's, it's a CVT motor, so there's a lot of data out there as far as how they work and functionality and working on them. Navi is pretty similar to, to your standard CVT four-stroke motor. Kind of want to go over the basics of the transmission. You're not really going to be doing much here unless you install a camshaft and that'll probably be another video at a later date coming around the other side here and just go over the basics your exhaust where your stator and everything is just give you guys a rough rundown of kind of how these motors work your spark plug and whatnot first off kind of the most important thing that you guys are going to work on is going to be your your cvt and that's your transmission and that's all going to be under this cover and you've got a belt in here and a pulley and whatnot i just right now i just have one bolt holding this cover on because we've been testing things and it's just quicker for me to show you that without pulling them all off but you're going to have a Eight millimeter bolts all around here and this is going to be something that you'll have to access to change your belt change your rollers change your clutch change your spring the transmission is going to affect how it takes off how it accelerates and it can also drastically affect your top speed as well uh, clutch engagement and just regular maintenance maintenance as well so the kind of the main things you guys are going to want to do on these bikes uh, while you own them is going to be your oil change which is very very simple uh, same theory as you know um a lot of your Honda PCXs and, and GSXs kind of same same theory for the most part. Um, but this video is more or less to kind of just show you all the components and, and what they do and, and why they're there. So naturally you would have all these bolts all the way around this case. So we're gonna go ahead and start by just taking the one off here, um, just so you guys can get to it a little bit faster. So in this cover, this one's been clearanced because uh, when you install the uh, Ravenel clutch. If you're going to install the Ravenel clutch, you need to clearance this whole area out in here. And it does take some time. If you have a die grinder, it's probably about an hour's worth of work to clearance this all out. So just be prepared. If you do install the Ravenel, you do need to clearance this area in here. Put the clutch cover on, turn the wheel to make sure it doesn't rotate, make sure it doesn't hit anything. Uh, as long as it doesn't hit anything, you're going to be good. This is going to look a little bit different to you guys because it's been clearanced. Up here in the front, um, if you pull these screws off, you're going to have your, your kickstart components. There's a spring in here and this little cup. This cup grips on this gear right here to rotate the motor. This is an area you guys probably won't have to deal with that much. It's going to be something if you do kickstart it and the kickstarter doesn't spring up, then it kind of feels grimy and sticky. You need to take this all apart, hit it with compressed air, and then go through and lubricate everything. Dust from your belt will kind of get in here and get a little bit, make everything kind of sticky because it kind of sticks to all those surfaces. So over time, this area will kind of become a little bit grimy, so it's good to take this off, hit it with air, and then hit it with a brake cleaner and a lubricant to make that work properly. However, I don't foresee most people, because it has a good electric start, I don't foresee most people are going to even be using this. However, it is really nice that Honda included this because a lot of bikes, like the ADV, does not have a kickstart. The CH80 does not have a kickstart kickstart a lot of bikes don't so thank you hana for putting a kickstart and keeping things um, a little bit more simple but first off what we have going on here is this is your variator up front i'm gonna pull this off and show you guys the variator consists of um, there's a pulley a ramp plate rollers guides and then there's this this is your drive face and these teeth are for your your uh, starter to contact so you click the starter button starter comes out like a car essentially grabs these teeth rotates the motor around Get you going. Shouldn't really have to mess with the starter. If you do, it's very easy to replace up here. Like I said, I, I highly doubt anybody's gonna be doing that anytime soon. Come here, yeah, little fella. That piece, yeah, just magically kind of sits in there and your cover is what holds that down. So I'll leave it off for the time being. You've got your belt. And what you guys wanna do with this belt is, you know, I, I wouldn't really worry about it until, you know, you get to a thousand plus miles and then you're gonna to wanna to take a, a peek at this belt. And what you wanna do is you wanna measure this width on this belt and check OEM specification. There's gonna be a specification where it should be because if it gets thin to a certain amount, what's gonna happen is you're gonna to lose top speed because this belt can't come all the way up to the top and you're gonna lose takeoff because the belt is gonna sit a little bit lower down this back pulley. So over time, if you feel like your Navi is getting slower and slower and slower and you look, oh, I've got, you know, 1,000, 1,500, two, three, 4,000 miles on it. If you haven't replaced your belt, that is gonna be a big problem. You wanna replace it. Also, if they do wear out in time, it's a wear item and it just like a car, serpentine belt, fan belt, it will break. And when it breaks on you, it leaves a big mess, leaves you stranded. So refer to your owner's manual is to check to see when you replace it and what the spec is on that width. And again, that width is gonna be measured in millimeters and it's this width here. Over time, it will get narrower. Okay, so I've kind of brushed on the belt. Go ahead and I'll take the variator off. I'll kind of loosen everything up. Hello. 
Hi, this is Paul Rawdy with Medicare Health Services. How are you today? Did you say your your name is Paul Wall, People's Champ? This is Paul Rawdy, pa sir. With Paul Medicare Wall. Health Services. You might do you cause a deep do you cause a cold front when you take a deep breath? Sir, this is Paul Rawdy. Yeah, Paul Wall, the People's Champ, right? No, it's not Paul a, Wall, about right? a scam. Sir. Paul Wall. No, Paul. No, not a scam. Paul Wall, People's Champ. You might cause a cold front if you take a deep breath. All right, sir, sure, but. This call is regarding a secondary enrollment period going on for Medicare Part C. Uh, fart? Fart C? No, oh, man. Okay, where was I? Before he in rudely interrupted me. Okay, I'm gonna find the sockets for this guy here. The front is gonna be a 22. The back, if I recall correctly, is a 19. So 19, 22. And it's gonna be different on, all the navvies are gonna be the same, but if you guys have a GY6 or whatever, Honda, make sure that, that you use the right size socket because they're they're gonna vary bike to bike. All right, so we're gonna pop the back off. Come on, you. This is not what you would use to put this on, okay? I used the impact over here to put it on. If you're not good with an impact and you don't have a good feel for when to stop, don't use an impact because some people will just drive things home and they don't know when to stop and they'll damage the transmission. So if you're not good at using an impact, knowing how to moderate, how hard you squeeze that trigger and how long you squeeze it for, don't do it. Just stick to hand tools. All right, that being said, now you guys kind of get a better view on how this all works. The clutch on this Navi right now, we are rocking the NCY clutch and we're rock rocking the Melosi belt. Now this is something we sell and it drastically improves the bottom end. It's like a completely different bike. When you rev up the bike, it doesn't have this soggy takeoff. It just grabs and goes. So that is that's that is a huge, huge plus on this bike. Um, that's a good, good benefit. It's not that expensive. We do stock that. Also, this is rocking the Melosi Variator as well, um, which is gonna give you more top end, more acceleration all around. The Melosi Variator does use different size rollers so if you have dr pulley sliders or if you have stock rollers it will not fit in this variator if you think you're going to keep tuning and tweaking and building the bike and playing with it just don't buy stock rollers don't buy dr pulley sliders get the melosi variator kit it's pretty much good out of the box that way you're not wasting money on on rollers that will not fit in this variator okay so covers off and of course we've got some performance parts on here but we'll just kind of go over the basic this is your clutch bell this has got a, typically it's a little bit of a rougher surface in here. And the way this works is your engine spinning around like so. Okay, it's spinning around like this. The more throttle you give it, there's springs in here in this clutch that hold these shoes back. Those shoes fly out and they grip this clutch. This clutch is hooked to this shaft here and that turns your wheel. So as you have the motor up, centrifugal force causes these shoes to fly out contact the inside surface of this clutch and it basically locks this to this here in the middle turning your back wheel so that's how the clutch works pretty simple um, it's a little bit weird to get your wrap your mind around at first but uh, but it's a pretty simple theory and you've got a spring in here this spring dictates how stiff this is here we've got the uh, Melosi Contra spring in here right now the way your guys CVT works and it is basically when you're idling, your front is gonna sit down low like this. The back is gonna sit up high. Maybe this will help out a little better. Just guys, explain to you guys CVT, okay? Think about a mountain bike. You have a small gear up front. This is gonna spin around, and this is gonna give you more torque because it's up at the higher point. So this is gonna be essentially your, um, your shortest gear ratio. This would be like your first gear in your car, okay? Now, as you accelerate, these shoes are gonna fly out and they're gonna contact the clutch. Now you're moving, okay? Your bike's moving down the road. Your clutch is engaged. Now your clutch, you can kind of take that out of the equation. This is the clutch. The contra spring is down here. This is gonna be your rear pulley, okay? This is not a variator. This is not a clutch. This is your rear pulley. This spring keeps your transmission from shifting too fast because up in the front here, what you have, up in the front you have rollers. These rollers are weighted and they have different different grams. Um, you can adjust it however you want. What happens is as you accelerate, same theory as the back to an extent, as you accelerate and this pulley here starts spinning around faster and faster, what happens is those rollers fly out and that plate comes up. In theory, stay with me, okay? This is how your bike is sitting at idle. As you accelerate, it's gonna go like this, okay? 
And what that's gonna do, that's gonna take this belt from this position, it's gonna drive it further and further and further up, changing that ratio. As it's driving further up, it's gonna go lower in the back as well. So as these two, two front surfaces, your pulley and your drive face come together, this belt is gonna go like this, higher and higher and higher and higher, changing that ratio. And then in the back, you're gonna be all the way down in the back. So at full speed, wide open throttle, you're gonna be up here. At, at idle or dead stop, you're gonna be here. So as you accelerate and as the bike gains speed, this ratio changes from this to that. Um, so that explains how the rollers work. If you have heavier rollers, this is gonna start shifting sooner because they're gonna fly out sooner. If you have heavy rollers, it's gonna fly out sooner. Your transmit, your RPM is gonna stay low as you accelerate. So that, in theory, you're gonna to wanna to tune that for your weight, okay? If you're a heavy rider, you wanna have lighter rollers in here to get it to shift a little bit later in the RPM. That way, let's say your bike is sitting at 3,000 RPM and it's shifting, okay? You're not making a lot of power at 3,000, okay? And now you hit a hill and you can't gain speed. Well, maybe you wanna put lighter rollers in here because you're heavier rider to get the RPMs up higher. That way it's, it's you're riding and accelerating at, say, 5,000 RPM, you have a little bit more power. So this is where your tuning comes in, um, here with this variator, the Melosi variator, and the clutch and bell. Drastic difference, um, huge, huge, huge difference here. So that kind of explains how this works. This goes in, uh, the back side of this, uh, looks like you've got a cover on the back. You've got gears in here, Those are your, that's your final drive. There's oil back here, which we've got a little S23 cap here as well, that's where you fill it, that's where you drain it. That's something you just have to change periodically, however, um, it's not that often you have to change that, it's, it, it lasts a long time. You're not really gonna be messing with this, just make sure if you're in here working on things, make sure that goes back in its position. Uh, if that's in wrong or not in at all, you will not have electric start, that, that's what starts this bike. That pretty much covers the transmission and the theory behind how it works, I feel. Again, you've got a pulley, you have a contra spring, I think it's called a torque spring as well, but contra spring is in here. They make those in 1,000, 1,500, and 2,000. We typically use 1,500. That basically slows down the shifting a little bit more. It also grips the belt a little bit better because it's got more pressure. This pulley at this, oh, look at that. It's a high pull. Um, this pulley, as far as right now, it feels like a pretty good pulley, so may or may not ever make those. Um, we have a beefier clutch on this guy and your clutch has one, two, three springs in it. These springs can also be changed as well. However, you know, I would advise if you're going to be modifying this bike, just get the clutch right off the bat because you're gonna be wasting money on springs that won't work in other clutches. We see it all the time. Um, just do it once, be done. That's uh, that's kind of my, um, my theory on it. If you do wanna buy clutch springs for the stock clutch, you can do that. However, the stock clutch and bell leaves a lot to be desired because it's a solid, it has a lot more mass and it doesn't breathe like this one, so it's gonna, get hot and then it's gonna kind of feel soggy and just kind of feel weak the, the warmer your bike gets. The way you're gonna put this back together, now let's just assume this is all stock and not aftermarket. What you're gonna do, say you get in here and you get in here and you wanna change your rollers around and then you put them all back together, make sure these slides go in properly and make sure everything works right. If you accidentally put this back together and you have a roller flipped, your vari variator's gonna sit all funky and you're gonna have problems. So verify and make sure all these are put in right and make sure everything goes on correct. You're gonna slide this over here. Again, this is your, this is considered your pulley. This is your boss. This black piece here is your ramp plate. And these three little black pieces are your plastic guides. These will, will wear out in time as well. So be prepared for that. Now what I like to do, your belt, make sure it's facing the right direction. I typically take this guy. Hey, you see my message? I did, hi Paul. Push this guy down in here like so. Okay, so now you've got that belt down in the, in the back. You wanna have the belt up here when you put this dry face back on. The reason being is if you have this belt down here and you tighten this dry face down, this surface here is not gonna sit against the metal boss. It's gonna sit against the belt and then it's gonna feel tight. Then when you go to start the bike up, everything's gonna move and this dry fit's gonna be loose. But once you get the belt sucked down on the back, you're gonna come over here. You're gonna pull this up like this. You're gonna take your dry face, put it on just like that. You hear how it hits the metal? If you don't put the belt down on the back and you have it like this, okay? And you go to put your dry face on, you're hitting rubber. See how that wobbles like that? You tighten down, you think it's tight, you run the bike, 
and then the belt moves. Now your drive face is loose. This is steel. You end up ruining your, your crank and or ruining your drive face. So best case scenario, you ruin your drive face, but you can also completely destroy your crank. It's very common. So make sure when you do this, make sure when you do this, you have slack in this belt. Your belt is somewhere up here. And when you put it on, you hear it hit that metal. Once you get that guy on, your drive face, you're gonna slide on this strange looking throwing star fan. You're gonna put on your castle washer, which is splined as well, and it's gonna fit on. It's kinda of tight, brand new bike. Okay, castle washer's on. Then you have a washer here, and your nut. Okay, and you're gonna tighten that all back down. Very simple, very straightforward. The back is, is much simpler. You're gonna put your bell on, you're gonna put your washer on, like so, and you're gonna tighten the nut. Always hand tighten it, or turn it by hand, at least you know a few threads before you go at it with any type of tools to make sure you're, everything's good. So that covers the transmission. Um, again, this has some performance parts on it, but the theory is the same. That covers the transmission on this bike. Next thing we'll go over, we kind of touch base on the transmission, is the carburetor.